God is good. This is not everybody. I said, God is good. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm happy to be in the house of the Lord this evening. Now, brothers and sisters, you may not understand why every time I stand in the house of the Lord, I am elated, I'm excited. Why? Because I know what it means to be able to walk into the house of the Lord and praise his name. Now, some of you don't understand what I'm talking about, but let me just give you a testimony before I preached this evening. A number of months ago, not too long ago, my mother, who lives in the U.S. with us, my mom said to us, she said, she was at my sister's home, she said, I want to go back to Guyana and spend a little vacation. Well, you know, when your mama would have mined you all these years, and I've learned that you've got to give flowers when people can smell them. You've got to give cards when folks can read them. You've got to give love when folks can feel. My mama said she wants to go home for a few days. A strong mama would walk miles when she gets ready. She got up the Sunday morning and she said she wants to go home that Sunday night. We purchased the ticket and sent her home on vacation. She had a wonderful week. The Sabbath she went to church with the brethren. She praised the Lord. Sunday morning when she woke up, she could not have gotten up. What happened? Well, the spinal cord, spine in her neck collapsed. Are you listening to me, brothers and sisters? They called me and they told me, I told them to get, them, get her to the hospital. That's in Guyana. They rushed her to the hospital. The folks said they don't have what it takes to deal with something like that. I flew down to Guyana. My brothers and sisters, when I got there, said, we're going to fly her back to the U.S. They said, no, we can't allow you to fly with her. We can't allow her to travel to the U.S. because we're concerned with the oxygen level. We're concerned. She can't move her hands, can't move anything. So I said, what will become of her here? The doctor told me privately, he said, it's just a matter of time. I said, you've got to allow me to take her to the U.S. He said, no, we can't. We went around to a few government officials and finally, after two weeks, with her lying there and getting worse, they granted me permission to fly her back. They told me the morning and we got her on a plane by afternoon because we did not want them to change their minds. When she got up to the U.S., the doctor said to my sister, he said, if we had gotten her within 24 hours, she would be able to talk again. She would have been able to move her hands again. But two weeks passed. When my sister told me, I said to her, that's what the doctors say. Is anybody listening to me? I said, that's what the doctors, that's what they said. But you have not asked me what God is saying. My brothers and sisters, today my mom, while she can't walk, but I have news for you, she can drive her own wheelchair. She can talk and praise the Lord. She can lift her hands and feed herself. I'll stop by to tell somebody here tonight, we serve an almighty God. Sometimes she would say to me, she said, I wish I can 
walk myself to church like I used to and praise God in his sanctuary. When she told me that, I said to myself, every time I walk into the house of the Lord, I'm going to remember the goodness of the Lord because the main fact I can walk, the main fact I can talk, the main fact I can tell somebody happy Sabbath is a blessing from the Lord. And so today I want you to turn to somebody next to you and say, I thank God that we can be here this week. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, we had a wonderful we had a wonderful night last night. Am I talking the truth? Hold on under the theme retention. The message last evening was entitled Hold On, No Compromise. Hold on to what you have as a church. Hold on to what you have as a people. No compromise. Hallelujah. This evening, we'll look at a topic, hold on, God remembers. What is the message this evening, everybody? How can I speak without saying how blessed I am to have heard a group of young people from Canada? What beautiful singing. My brothers and sisters, the young man, the young man who played, what instrument is that? It's not a violin. It's a violin. Oh my, my brother, I don't know where they got you from, but mm. God is good, everybody. To God be the glory. My good friend and family and colleague, in ministry. Dr. Kirk Thomas told me he would have been here this evening. He don't disappoint. Uh, but I'm so thankful to know that he's on his way if he's not here as yet. But may the Lord continue to bless him as he serves the Lord. I had an amazing sight. One more thing before I preach. Is that all right, uh, Pastor Larty? I had an amazing sight today. I was walking by the playground and I saw a young man in his suit. He wasn't there to play on the swing and the slide, but he was there to help a child play on the slide and the pole. I'm talking about your president. Somebody say amen. And I said to myself, what humility. Isn't God good? What humility. Let's continue to pray that the Lord will continue to bless him. The message this evening. God remembers. Hold on. God remembers. Why not turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel. And the pastor who read the scripture reading did an amazing job. Hallelujah. First Samuel, everybody. Do you like to read the word? <laughs> I'm going to ask it again. Do you like to read the word? If you really love to read the word, why not stand with me wherever you are? Hallelujah. First Samuel. Hold on. God remembers. First Samuel. And let us read from verse 2. 1 Samuel chapter 1 from verse 2. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 1 from verse 2. Let's go together, everybody. And he had, that's Elkanah. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah. And the name of the other, Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. 
And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina his wife and to all her sons and her daughters potions. But to Hannah, he gave a worthy potion. For he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore, for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh. And after they had drunk, now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid but will give unto thine handmaid a man child then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life and there shall no razor come upon his head and it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had drunken. She had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, how long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thine wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I've poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of Belilah. For out of the abundance of my what? Complaint and grief have I spoken hitherto. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. The last two verses. And she said, let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. So the woman went her way and did eat. And her what, everybody? Her countenance was no more sad. And they rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house Rama and Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord, help me somebody, and the Lord remembered Hannah. The message today is entitled, Hold On, Hold On, 
the Lord remembers. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold on. God remembers. Hannah had a God-fearing husband. She had a husband who loved her and took care of her. She had a beautiful home. Her family was wealthy. But yet, Hannah was not happy. She looked good on the outside but was filled with brokenness on the inside. She had, you see, an unfulfilled dream that caused her great pain. She looked good when she went to worship. She looked good when she went to church. But she was broken. On the inside. How many people. How many people look good. On the outside. But are filled with brokenness. On the inside. My brothers and sisters. One problem with the church is that we judge people from the outside. If only we would remember that not everybody who comes to church in a beautiful dress or a fancy suit is happy on the inside. Oh, church of the living God. How many people look good on the outside but are filled with brokenness on the inside? I'll tell you a secret. I've discovered as a pastor that many people come to church with a mask on. I said many people come to church with a mask. On. If only you should see the heart. If it were not for the mercies of God, many folks would not even be here. But the reason they come is because they believe that in the house of God, their hearts can be mended. In the house of God, they can receive hope. This is why I tell brethren, treat people good. I'll say it one more time, treat people good. The Adventist church is good with preaching doctrines. We're excellent in pulpiteering. But we've got to be careful with the way we treat one another. We're talking about retention. There are many people who would be in the church today. If only. I said if only. We had treated them better. We've got to understand that the church is a hospital. A hospital for sinners. And so everybody who comes to church is sick somewhere. Is he, are you listening to me, brothers and sisters? And so we've got to treat people good. <laughs> I pastor the church. I pastor the church. And I watched. That's when I was in the field. I watched many people pass through those doors. I watched many people pass through those doors. And I watched Many folks went on. One day, 
while the church was filled with people every Sabbath, they put pews coming to church to hear the word. I knew that folks were missing. And one sister said to me one day, she said, Pastor, if the folks at the, the, in the kitchen, if they would stop speaking to people the way they speak to folks, we would still be there. My brothers and sisters, she was enjoying the word. Her family excited with the messages every Sabbath. But they could not have taken the way folks treated them in the kitchen. My brothers and sisters, how many people look good on the outside, but are broken on the inside? How many people have, but yet they are not happy? How many people have degrees, but still they are not happy? How many folks have husbands and wives, but still they are not happy? How many people have positions and status, but still they are not happy? How many folks have money? I said, have money, but still they are not happy. Do I have a witness? Yes, I do. Whitney Houston had money, but she drugged herself to death. Michael Jackson had money, but he drugged himself to sleep every night. My brothers and sisters, there must be something better than money. I said, there must be something better than things. There must be something better than position. There must be somebody better than what we have. His name is Jesus. I said, his name is Jesus. And if you have Jesus, you have everything. A young girl was asked one day in school, who is Jesus? She said to the teacher, sir, Jesus is everything. The teacher said, you mean to tell me he's everything? She said, yes, Jesus is everything. He was teaching the alphabet. She said, sir, he's even the alphabet. The teacher started to laugh. She said, he's everything, even the alphabet. The teacher said, tell me, how come he's the alphabet? She said, A, he's almighty. B, he is blessed. C, he is the Christ. D, he is deliverer. E, he is eternal. F, he is faithful. G, he is God in human flesh. H, he is our high priest. I, he intercedes for you and for me. J, he is just. K, he is king of kings and lord of lords. L, he's long suffering. M, he is mighty to save. O, he is omnipotent. P, he is the prince of peace. Q, he is quite all right. R, he restores. S, he saves. T, he is true. U, he is unique. V, he keeps his vows. W, he died that whosoever will may come. X, he's extra special. Y, he is yours. He is yours. And then she said Z. She said Z, when folks turn against you, when your bank book is low, when your back is against the wall, he zeroes in at the right time. She said, if you have Jesus, you have everything. I stop by here there to tell somebody, if you have Jesus, you have money. Because the cattle upon a thousand hills, they belong to him. If you have Jesus, you have favor. You don't have to run behind folks to like you or favor you. You just got to trust and obey. If you have Jesus, you have health because he is the healer. Tell your neighbor, he is better than money. He is better than anything this world has to offer.
My brothers and sisters, Hannah had everything, but yet she was not happy. What was the problem? Hannah was barren. She could not have given her husband a child. She was barren. Her dream, her dream was to, her dream was to have a child. Her dream was to live up to society's expectation of childbearing. But she hadn't the ability nor capacity to fulfill her dream. Humanly, humanly, she could not have accomplished her dream. And so she was an unfulfilled woman. Is anybody here today feeling unfulfilled? Then you can identify with Hannah. Hannah was an unfulfilled woman. But the Bible did not stop there. The Bible tells us, yes, she was an unfulfilled woman, but she was also, she was also a woman of faith. I said she was also a woman of faith. You see, what Hannah, what Hannah believed is that one's inability and lack of capacity must not stop you from dreaming. In other words, what you don't have humanly must not stop you from dreaming. You see, Hannah understood that what she lacked must not stop her from dreaming because she knew that when ability fails when humanity fails there is a man named Jesus who never fails somebody say hallelujah the song says he never failed me yet he never failed me yet Jesus Christ never failed me yet Yet, I want to tell somebody here today, I don't know what your dream is, but I stopped by here today to tell you, keep on dreaming. Even though humanly, you may not have the ability nor capacity, there is a man named Jesus. When doctors fail, when biology fails, when humanity fails, Jesus will not never fail my brothers and sisters Hannah Hannah's inability to give her husband a child caused him to have a second wife named Penina Penina gave him the children. She bore him the children that Hannah could not have born. The Bible tells us that the other wife, Penina, she ensured that Hannah never forgot her inadequacies. And so every day, she would taunt Hannah. She would say, barren. Every day she would trouble Hannah. My brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us it reached its zenith, its acme, on their trip to Shiloh. What happened on the journey to Shiloh? Well, brothers and sisters, every year, Elkanah would journey to Shiloh with his wives and children to sacrifice and worship at the tabernacle. Every year he did it. And my brothers and sisters, when he got to the tabernacle, 
he offered a thank you offering. I said he offered a thank you offering. What was the thank you offering? Well, the thank you offering allowed the worshiper to eat the portion that was not offered to the Lord. And the worshiper ate the potion in praise and thanksgiving. My brothers and sisters, what Elcano did, Elcano, after he offered the sacrifice, he would take portions of the meat and he would, go, he would give to Penina and her children. And then the Bible tells us he would take a worthy potion and he would give it to Hannah because she could not have borne children. She had no children. Oh, how it pained Hannah. He would give it to Hannah. Yes, it was a sacrifice of thanksgiving to God. But yet Hannah was broken. He would give to Penai. I can imagine the sacrifice. I can imagine how they had a huge, a big round table. And I can imagine Penina and her sons and, and children sitting on one side. I can imagine Hannah on the other side. And I can imagine Elkanah, Elkanah would give to Penina and her children portions of the meat in thanksgiving and as they got their portion they would shout praise God they would shout hallelujah and then he would give a worthy portion to Hannah on the other side because she was barren but the Bible tells us church of the living God that Hannah still she still ate her portion she still ate her portion in praise and thanksgiving to God why? Because she said to herself, even though I have no children, I still have something to praise God for. I stopped by here today to ask somebody, with all you are going through, do you still have something to praise God for? Then you better praise him. Don't let what you are going through hinder your praise. Don't let disappointments hinder your praise. Don't let people, what people say about you and the dirt they throw at you hinder your praise because God is still good and his mercies endure it forever. You see, I've learned long ago when you have trials and tribulations, it doesn't mean that God is not blessing you. What it means is that he is taking you to another a level that you don't even know about. Somebody say hallelujah. And so each trial can be termed a blessing. You see what the devil means for your danger. The Lord will turn it into your blessing. Is anybody listening to me? And so don't let what you are going through hinder your prayer. I learned long ago not to allow what people say about me and the dirt that they throw at me to hinder my praise because I've learned that God is taking me to another level all I've got to do is keep praising him through my trial I've learned to ignore the dirt I've learned to ignore the enemies and keep my eyes on Jesus how can I tell you how to deal with your enemies when they throw stuff at you this is how you deal with them the other day I read a story it was about a mule I said it was about a mule a man had a mule and he said to his neighbors this mule is a waste of time this mule is serving no purpose he said I want to get rid of this mule but I don't know how to get rid of the mule he went to his backyard and he dug a big ditch a deep ditch and one day when the mule was passing, it was a mule. When the mule was passing, the mule fell into the ditch. I said the mule fell into the ditch. 
when the man looked at the mule in the ditch he said now I have an opportunity to get rid of this mule and so he called his neighbors he said neighbors come and help me bury this mule this mule is serving no purpose the neighbors came with their shovels and their instruments and their, and their tools and they took the dirt and they started to throw it on the mule and every time they threw dirt on the mule this mule would just look up and he shook it off and trampled on it ah they threw more dirt on the mule and the mule shook it off and trampled on it they threw more dirt and every time they threw the dirt and the mule shook it off and trampled on it the mule got higher and higher are you listening to the, pu the preacher they threw more dirt and the mule shook it off trampled on it and before you know it the mule was looking them in the eyes and they threw more dirt and the mule got higher and they got lower can I tell somebody when folks throw dirt at you you've got to learn to shake it off in Jesus' name and trample on it and the Lord will keep raising you higher and higher when you come to that level you will understand that every dirt that is thrown at you is now a blessing every trial the devil throw at you will become a blessing no wonder the songwriter said I thank God for the mountains and I thank him for the valleys I thank him for the storms he brought me through for if I'd never had a problem I wouldn't know that God could solve them. I wouldn't know what faith in God can do. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in the Lord. I stopped by to tell somebody, stop allowing folks to hinder your praise and count trials as a blessing. Shake them off. Trample on them and the Lord will make your enemies your footstool. My brothers and sisters, Hannah sat there at the table, her heart broken, but yet she was praising God. I said, yet she was thanking God. You see, brothers and sisters, you don't thank God only for what he did. You don't thank God only for what he is doing. You've got to learn to thank God for what he will do. Because God lives in the past. He lives in the present. And he lives in the future. All at the same time. Time. I said all at the same time and so when you're going through your trials now it doesn't mean that the battle is over is anybody listening to me uh, you may be down now but you've got to learn not to stay down because a day is coming when you will be on the mountaintop and so you got to start praising God now and so Hannah she ate her potion and I can hear her say in her mind it's just a matter of time I know God is going to bless me and the Bible tells us that Hannah did something I said Hannah did something that will teach us what to do when your trials become more than you you see every one of us there comes a time when it seems as though your burdens are more than you. There comes a time when it seems as though your trials are more than you. Well, Hannah had reached that point when she sat in that tent and she looked at this woman, Penina. Her Penina while eating her meat and Elkanah is somewhere else. Under her breath, 
with Hannah hearing every bite she said barren she said barren are you losing your husband barren I'm better than you barren and so my brothers and sisters she reached the place where she could not have taken it anymore and this is what Hannah did when everybody was paying attention to something else she got up from her spot and she slipped out of the tent and she ran to the tabernacle and she fell down between the porch and the altar and she started to cry out to the living God I said she started to cry out to the living God because Hannah knew that there's power in prayer I want to tell somebody here today in all you are going through you've got to learn to hold on to prayer because there's power in prayer I read in the Bible that prayer divided seas there's power in prayer I read that prayer rolled up flowing rivers there's power in prayer I read prayer cause rocks to gush into fountains I read that prayers cause the stars to marshal against the enemy I read that prayer cause the sun to stand still the moon to stop in its course I read that prayer muzzled lions disarm vipers I read that prayer open prison doors set saints free I read that prayer caused the dead to live again I read that prayer brought a man from the bottom of the sea in the belly of a whale and prayer took another to heaven on a chariot of fire. I stopped by to tell somebody you've got to learn to hold on to prayer. Yeah. Sister White says in Desire of Ages page 667 I memorized it. This is what she said. She said every sincere prayer is heard in heaven. It may not be fluently expressed, but if the heart is in it, it will ascend to the sanctuary where Jesus ministers and he will present it to the Father without one awkward, stammering word, beautiful and fragrant with the incense of his own perfection. Hallelujah! My brothers and sisters, there's power in prayer. When the enemy comes against you, you've got to learn to fight back. But you don't fight back with swords. You don't fight back with shields. You've got to learn to fight back on your knees. Somebody say hallelujah. Don't leave this church because of what you're going through. You got to go down on your knees. Don't give up on God because of your trials. Get down on your knees. Sister White says the weakest saint on his knees will cause the devil to tremble because when you pray, prayer is humanity laying hold on divinity and when humanity and divinity combine great things happen I said when humanity and divinity combine you see when you fight in battles in your own strength you are just humanity you fight in an enemy that you can't even see. But when you lay hold on divinity and humanity and divinity combine, great things happen. Somebody say hallelujah. You see, brothers and sisters, our warfare is not in the human realm. Yeah, I got to say that again. I said our warfare is not in the human realm. That cancer that attacked you, it's more than humanity. Ah, somebody listening to me. When the boss is on your back because of the Sabbath, it's more than humanity. 
you are now involved in a spiritual warfare. You've got to learn to lay hold on divinity and say, God, you take charge. And when God takes over, everything is going to be all right. I said, when God takes over, everything is going to be all right. Why do you think he said to Moses, I am that I am? In other words, he was saying, Moses, I'm whatever you want me to be. I, I, I'll say that again. When he said to Moses, when Moses said, I'm going into a warfare, Lord, that I'm not capable to take care of. God said, you tell them that the I am that I am sent you. In other words, in other words, Moses, whatever you want me to be in your battle, I am. Can I tell somebody as I close, whatever you want God to be, he is saying, I am. I said he's saying, I am. I'm your doctor in the sick room. I am. I'm your lawyer in the courtroom. I am. I'm your money when you're broke. I am. I'm your bridge over troubled waters. I am. I'm your prince of peace. I am. I'm the rose of Sharon. In other words, I perfume your life. I'm the lily of the valley. I cause you to stand out. Whatever you want me to be, God is saying, I am. Just turn the battle over to the Lord. Hannah run in. She ran into the temple. And Hannah threw herself down between the porch and the altar. I can hear her prayer. She got real with God. She refused to use all these fancy languages. And she said, God, I'm going to tell you as it is. She said, God, I married Elkanah. And God, marriage is from the Lord. I've been faithful to this man. But because I am barren, he went out on the outside. And Lord, he brought in Penina. God, I don't hate Penina. But Lord, I hate the pain I'm going through. She said, every day I've got to go through this stuff. Penina has her children, but I have none. Lord, my womb is shut up. But I did what you want me to do. I've been faithful in the little that you give me. She said, God, could you please touch my womb this once? Somebody say hallelujah. She said, God, could you touch my womb this once? And after she was finished praying and she was confident that God heard, she got up from her knees. She wiped the tears from her eyes and she looked at the altar and she said, God, I'm leaving my burdens at this altar. She wiped her tears and she said, God, I have one more thing to tell you. When you open my womb, not if you open it, but when you open my womb, I will give the child back to you. And then she wiped her eyes. You've got to talk to God with confidence. You've got to say, God, when you heal my broken spirit, God, when you heal my family, God, when you set me free, I'm going to testify. I'm going to let the Lord of the world know that had it not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? It's all because of the goodness of God and so she got up from her knees and she looked back and she said it's at the altar are you listening to the preacher as she walked back to the tent the neighbors started to shout the neighbors said barren and she said it's at the altar uh, the neighbors shouted your family is in trouble she said it's at 
the altar. The neighbors shouted, you're losing your husband. She said, it's at the altar. The neighbors shouted, you are a no good. She said, it's at the altar. I stopped by to tell somebody, burdens are lifted at the altar. You've got to learn to lay down your problems at the feet of Jesus. At the feet of Jesus, demons tremble. At the feet of Jesus, problems are solved. At the feet of Jesus, issues are supplied. At the feet of Jesus, families are mended. At the feet of Jesus, sicknesses are healed. She said it's at the altar. And the Bible tells us that nine months later, I said nine months later, the Bible says the Lord remembered Hannah. I said the Lord remembered she remembered Hannah. Hannah found her. She felt something leaping in her womb. And as she looked at it, she said, God is doing something. And then she got bigger. Penina said, what's going on? She said, it's the blessings of the Lord. Because when the praises go up, the blessings come down. When you leave your burdens at the altar, God solved the problem. Somebody say hallelujah. Elkanah said, girl, what's really going on? She said, my husband, I've been faithful to you. And God said, if I make, if you are faithful in the little things, I will place you with big things. Somebody say hallelujah. Nine months later, the Lord remembered her. And Hannah gave birth to a bouncing baby boy. His name, Samuel. He became one of the greatest prophets that ever lived. When God blesses you, he doesn't bless you with anything. He blesses you extraordinary. Somebody say praise the Lord. But you gotta hold on. I said you gotta hold on. I know life is tough, but hold on. I know the church can get rough but hold on I know trials can come but hold on I know your burdens will be heavy but hold on and as long as you hold on the God that we serve he's the same God yesterday today and will be forever he remembered Hannah then and he will remember you now somebody say hallelujah because we serve a God God who remembers. He remember Abraham needed a child and in his old age he got a son. God remembers. He remembered Noah locked up in an ark. God remembers. He remembered Joseph in a pit and made him prime minister. God remembers. He remembered Moses in a basket and made him deliverer. God God remembers. He remembered Israel locked away in slavery and parted the Red Sea. God remembers. He remembered Samson in slavery. His hair began to grow again. God remembers. He remembered Esther standing before the king. Tell your neighbor God remembers. He remembered John the Revelator in a drum of boiling oil. God remembers and 2,000 years ago he remembered this world lost in sin he came as a babe in a manger because God remembers and soon and very soon we are going to see the king because God I said God is a God who remembers I will close with this story. A man was sailing in an ocean by himself. It was a good day, but then suddenly 
a storm came. And the storm caused the boat to be tossed to and fro. Eventually the waves were so powerful that the boat broke into pieces. The man was a Christian. He believed in God. Holding on to a piece of the boat, he said, God, God, remember me. Before he knew it, he was washed up on an island, a deserted island. When he looked, all he saw, wild animals. Wild animals staring at him as though they were awaiting a feast. He said, God, I ask you to remember me. Not to put me on an island by myself. My brothers and sisters, he walked around. All he saw, coconut trees. He took the branches and he made a hut, a shed. He said, God, thank you for this shed. It will protect me from the animals at night. It will protect me from the dew in the night and will protect me from the sun in the day. My brothers and sisters, days passed. All he ate, coconuts from the tree. One day, when he left the tent, he left the little shack and he went out and he pulled down the coconuts. On his way, to his tent in front of his very eyes the tent caught a fire from the heat of the sun he fell down with the coconuts he said God I begged you to remember me but this is evidence that you have forgotten me he said, God, how can you take away the only thing I have on this island? How can you take away my protection? How can you take away my home to sleep at night? He said, God, I begged you to remember me. He said, God, I told you to send me a plane. I told you to send me an aircraft. I told you. But now you sent fire. He fell down in the sand. And as he was weeping, something said to him, look up. When he looked up, he saw a ship coming towards the island. Honking the horn and driving to the island. He got up and he started to wave. The captain anchored the ship. And the captain said, we don't drive this way. In fact, ships don't ever sail this way. But we got lost. We got lost in the ocean. And as we were sailing by this way, we saw fire. We saw smoke. And it told us that somebody was signaling to be rescued. Can I tell somebody here today? You keep holding on to Jesus. You can't tell him how to deliver. You can't tell him when to deliver. You can't put a calendar on God. You can't put a watch on God. He knows when to move. And he knows how to move. And when he moves, I said when he moves, it's the right time. He's never too late. He's never too early. He's always on time. Just keep holding on. I want to pray for somebody today. I want to pray for somebody. Today you want to say, Pastor, pray for me. Pray that God would help me to hold on. I'm going through my trials. I have some rough times, Lord. My children may not be doing what they should do. My family may be in turmoil. God, help me to hold on. 
I don't know what you want God to help you to hold on for but this one thing I know God sees in secret and he knows in secret is anybody here today in need of prayer you want to hold on can I make an altar call? Where's the beautiful praise team? Could you sing me? Could you sing me that team song? We can sing that team song. And if you really want prayers, you want to say, God, help me to hold on. God, help me to trust you even when I can't trace you. God, help me to hold on. Why not leave your seats and come to this altar? I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you because we serve a God who remembers. He remembers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody here, you in need of special prayers. I don't know what you're going through, but, but you want special prayers. Come. Praise team. Could you help me? To God be the glory. Come. God is going to do something for you. Imagine yourself coming between the porch and the altar like Hannah. Imagine yourself. Imagine yourself saying, Lord, Lord, bless me. Lord, bless my family. God bless me. God bless me. Come, I want to pray for you. I don't know what, what you're going through, but there's one thing I know God knows. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing this song as you come. Sing as you come for prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, come, come. God is going to do something for you, come. Hallelujah. To God be the glory, come. for prayer. God, God wants to do something for you. Come. Imagine yourself like Hannah. Humanly, it may seem impossible, but with God, nothing is impossible. Come. Come for prayer. Come. It could be a sickness. God can heal it. It can be a problem. God can solve it. It can be a need. God can supply it. Come for prayer. Come. Sing it now like you mean it, everybody. Sing for Jesus. Hallelujah. I worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing it out, everybody. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Sing it and come for prayer, come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to make another call now. Sing everybody, sing like you mean. Listen to this call now. You've not yet given your life to Jesus. You've not yet given your life to Jesus. The Bible says, he that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. You want to say, Pastor, I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Lift your hands wherever you are. I want to pray for you tonight. Hallelujah. We've seen hands. We've seen hands. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. You want to say, Pastor, pray for me that I give my life to Jesus. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is going to work a miracle in your life. It's all about trusting Him. It's all about believing. He answers every sincere prayer. Hallelujah. We're going to pray now. our ministerial secretary hallelujah sing it like you mean it everybody God is going to work a miracle in your life he did it for Hannah he'll do it for you hallelujah You sing the chorus one more time. You are here one more time. 
last time now. Sing like you mean it, everybody. Because today is your day of victory. Sing like you mean it. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, you've done it again. You are still in the business of saving souls. You have done it again. And why we lost for words to express how we feel, we sing to recognize you are here. Oh God, for whatever step we took for you today, because of Jesus, meet our steps. Remember this step that we took for you. Remember our prayers today, Lord, and deliver us from the shackles that binds us. Remember our prayers today and free us from the shackles of the enemy. Remember our prayers today for the glory we give you today. Remember our cries and our joys. And now, Lord, just like the thief prayed on the cross, remember each one of us in your kingdom. It is my prayer tonight that let no one here be lost. But all of us will be saved in your kingdom because of Christ. And now, Lord, I pray and commit each one of us into your hands. May your hands hold us safe. May your eyes watch over us. May your presence go with each one of us. We pray for those who, for reasons unknown to us, are not able to come to this auditorium, but they are near Charlie's. Work with them, Lord. And for every prayer written on the scroll today, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, answer every prayer according to your wishes. Thank you, Lord, as we sing this song to glorify you. You are here. We worship you because you are the miracle worker, the way maker, and our light and darkness. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done today and for what you will do tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.